Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 85 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net I'll do my best to answer them. Let's just get right to it because I got a whole bunch. Let's start with Behind the Curve showing at Melbourne Film Festival. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. Just in case you didn't know, Behind the Curve is showing at the Melbourne Film Festival. And you can look that up at acmi.net.au events behind the curve. And yeah, in fact, let me look it up real quick. If I type in behindthecurvefilm.com, we are in eight as of this one. Uh, the eighth badge isn't up on the site yet. So if you go to behindthecurvefilm.com, uh, it's in October in Bellingham, Washington, Hot Docs, of course, in Toronto, Canada, the MIFF, that's the Milburn one, Documenta, I don't know if that's Mexico or Spain, the LA Film Festival down in Los Angeles, Calgary International Film Festival, and the Sin Sydney Australia Underground Film Festival, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. yeah, eight. Oh, including, I'm sorry, Denver. Didn't even mention that one. That's not even on here yet, but it will be at the Denver Film Festival, which is coming up at the beginning of November, right before the conference Denver to remember in November. So there you go. Thanks very much for that. This one's called Prep Guide, please. Hi, Mark. Please send the Prep Guide uh, and put in a good word for me with the lovely hot potato. <laughs> nice. Nice, and that is from uh, John. Very welcome, John. This one's called, and we don't have a lot of these this time, but I, I promise we got a lot more. The 12 Slides and Coast to Coast. Uh, good morning, Mark. I was wondering if you could send me the 12 slides from one of your recent TFR episodes. Also, could I get the old Coast to Coast episodes as well? Thank you. Enjoy the show. Keep up the good work. Flat Earth Fireman. Uh, and his name's Jake, but I'm not going to say his last name because I'm sure he wants to stay a fireman. And yeah, what he's talking about was the 12 slides that Jack, my subject matter expert, was talking. He said he could convince anyone with 12 slides on his phone. And it's like, all right. So I said, send me. And as soon as I said that on air, people said, oh, send me the 12 slides. So if you guys want the 12 slides, I've got them on this machine. I can just shoot them to you. It's not a big deal at all. And the Coast to Coast interviews, as some of you know, I cannot put on YouTube because they actually had me sign a release form saying I would not put them on YouTube. So I, I actually honor release forms. And I, I'll just send you the audio file if, if you email me and say, I want the Coast to Coast interviews. I can, I can do that. It's not, not a hard thing at all. This one's called Watch Robinson Morally Correct to Drop Alex Jones from Platforms on the Morning Joe MSNBC on YouTube. Uh, hi, Mark. I say this clip, saw this clip and thought it was interesting. The MSN might come after Flat Earth next since they feel they can control everything. That's from Marty. I, uh, yeah, if those again, you don't remember, Alex Jones was banned off of most, most of social media recently. But it wasn't because of Flat Earth. In fact, Alex Jones has gone out of his way. If some remember that his producers approached me, oh God, at least 18 months ago and said, can we do a Flat Earth show without actually saying the words Flat Earth? And you cannot. I, I said, you can only do it for about 10 minutes. So they, they backed out and they said, nope, nope, not going not gonna to do it. And they wouldn't have been the first. There's been several people out there, including CNN, that wouldn't have, CNN did a full blown interview, wouldn't even, it wasn't on video, it was on audio, but wouldn't even uh, run the story. And that was at least 18 months ago as well. So um, Alex Jones was, was hit for community guideline type stuff, hate speech type stuff. Uh, I mean, there's some things that are taboo right now, and that is uh, you can't go after public shootings. You can't go after mass shootings. You can't, you can't do it. I mean, you can, but you you run the risk of getting your channel taken down. So I do. At Flat Earth, though, remember, you're not attacking individuals. You're attacking an idea. And that idea is not oppressing anyone. In fact, Flat Earth is probably the most positive conspiracy in the history of conspiracies. We've got songs, hundreds of songs written about it. Find Me Another Conspiracy it even has a single track that's upbeat. That isn't like a parody of something. Uh, Flat Earth is a is a wonderful thing, and it, it makes a lot of people happy. I, I get emails every single day and phone calls every single day about people. It's like, oh yeah, I, I feel so much better now that I'm in Flat Earth. So uh, 
uh, you can't really compare the two. Alex Jones going down, no. Do I think that, I mean, even if you try to go after Flat Earth, all you'd have to do is to put it in a different wrapper and put it out there. It'd be really tough to control. Going after an individual, that's easy. You know, that's just a single person out there. Uh, going after an idea, much, much tougher. Ask any religion. All right, this one's called New Model Vid. Uh, hey, Mark, I heard you'll be wearing the cap. You can remove the silly logo on top and cut the cord and tuck it in the back if you want. Okay, this is from Chris Pontius, who made me some of the Flat Earth models. You can go to flatearthmodels.com and check out his really, really great 3D models that he's built. They're all lit up with LED stuff. It's really, really fun. He also sent me a hat. Uh, I wore it initially for a little bit down at the meetup in Altadena, which is in, which is called Pasadena, California, just recently over the summer. And I've been wearing it on Patricia's show. It runs off a little USB power supply, and it's really cool. And he told me just to clip off the top part because he thought that was kind of dippy. But the front part, the, the part that's flat over the bill, he, that actually turned out pretty well. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm sure I'll sell enough models for the next dinner. Uh, I'm not going to give that personal information. Um, uh, yeah, so Chris Pontius, I, I'm sorry, the rest of it's pretty much just personal. So if uh, anyone wants to check out his models, just go to, and I've been advertising them on my channel, just go to flatearthmodels.com and you'll find some great stuff in all price ranges. And I'm not paying, getting paid for that endorsement at all. Uh, this one's called Content for Your Site. Uh, it, Mark, check out this video. The Delivery Drivers, Flat Earth Part 1. Yep, I, I gave it a thumbs up. And, and the video is literally called The De De Delivery Drivers, Flat Earth Part 1. Uh, if you want this movie about Flat Earth to post on your site and, and have comment and talk about the significance, you might gain some great content for your site and aid others in their pursuit and understanding of the awareness. I talked to you about seven months ago, told you I was making a movie. It is done. Uh, you might have some for use of this on your site. And that's from a guy named Jonathan. Yeah, it's really cool. And thank, thank you for that. I don't know if I'm going to mirror it. I can't mirror everything. I mean, I've already got the problem with, with my YouTube page right now is I've got 1300 videos on there. And a couple hundred of them, yes, are promo. At least 300 of them or 400 of them are uh, promo videos, but the rest aren't. You know, 100 and something Strange World shows and about 100 shows with Patricia and about, you know, we're going to gain on 100 shows here for Q&A and everything's starting to stack up. So I can't mirror everything, but I will recommend it and, and share it around with a whole bunch of people. So thank you for that. This one's called the new T-shirts are here. The new T-shirts are here. Okay. Hey, Mark, Sean from Greenwood, Indiana. Thank you for taking the time to read my last email. Hope you were able to view the site I linked. I recently opened an online t-shirt biz featuring many flat earth and anti-scientism themed designs. I'm hoping very much to expand my outreach. So I'm asking if you could please have a shameless plug on your page. My Provo vid can be seen here and I should click on it real quick just to see what the heck it is. Sorry, it took me so long. It's called... Uh, it's called T-shirt shop, my new T-shirt shop. Okay, there's your problem. In fact, I'm gonna type this in right now. Put flat earth in the title or people will miss it like I did until just now. Because he, he published this thing back in 2000, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, August 8th. But yes, I have, I have gave it a thumbs up and put a nice little comment on there. So let's get back to the email. He also said that's from Sean. P.S. One of my t-shirt designs features the FE map with an arm underneath in the keep it flat position. I used your arm for it. <laughs> Great. This is the first time I'm reading this. Uh, you can use that for a random sexy pick pickup line. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you know my arm is on a t-shirt? irresistible let's see attached pic oh god now i gotta look at this picture oh wow no i'm not gonna open this picture it's a 13 meg file dude all right but i i will open it when i get a chance thank you for that this one's called slideshow please hey mark would you be so kind to forward a copy of the slideshow to me please and thank you cheers mark and yep i think he's from ottawa canada i sent that to him 
This one's called Flat Earth Clues, Magnetic Sun. Mark, first off, I have watched all of your Flat Earth Clues and really like the series. I have a couple of questions. Yes, I am a Flat Earth believer, as I have done extensive research this past year. I have looked and am trying to find articles on the sun and moon and what could be keeping them up in the sky, besides the obvious God answer. I had seen an interesting article on how the sun is magnetic, and this sounds very interesting, and how this accounts for the various nice colors at sunset. I am looking for any more articles discussing the sun and the moon and the relationship i wonder if tesla had it right all along and everything in this world is magnetic or electromagnetic also whenever i discuss this flat earth with others i think the best examples are that there is not a drop of eight inches per mile squared what are your best examples i also saw a great possible explanation of why the sky is blue and that is the waters above and the true color of pure water is blue I don't know. I also saw an interesting article about the sky stone that has been found by a few people and how it is blue and has an exotic makeup. Thanks, Dwayne. And he's from Spring Branch, Texas. And yeah, when it comes to my best examples, uh, it's the five questions that I that I posed to the, um, the, the Georgetown physicist, which would be the... Um, Long distance photography, vacuum of space versus gravity, the moon eclipse shadow is the wrong size, the moon temperature is is cold, and the Van Allen belts. Those are my, my five big ones. And I put those in a little file, and I'll, I can send to anybody you want. If you just say, I want those five questions, and you can pose those to anybody. Although the one I've been working on recently... And I'll probably do this at the conference is just grab, you want to make it really simple. You want to mess with people's heads. Go to, just grab any, anything like a, um, any sports ball that's pumped up like a basketball or a volleyball or a football. It's got to have air in it though. And show it to somebody. Well, basketball I think works the best because, you know, it's something they can hold on to and it's, and it's perfectly spherical and it, it's got a nice leather cover. Although a soccer ball is not bad either. I, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and ask them, it's like, okay. Why doesn't a spacesuit look like this? And and they'll they'll stare at you for a while. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, there's there's air in it, right? There's higher pressure in the ball. You know, you pump it up with a little extra air, atmosphere, and then there's lower pressure on the outside. And there's this pressure imbalance. Is why you know the air in the inside wants to get out. It wants to balance out. And it's like, well, what's your point? And it's like, well, a spacesuit is just a thick balloon it's it's just higher pressure on the inside and lower pressure on the outside and it's a flexible suit it's just a thick balloon it's flexible how does it not turn into a basketball and people and people will scratch their heads on this They're like uh and eventually there's only one answer they can give only one answer kind of like the uh the the atmosphere of atmosphere versus gravity they'll they'll say oh it's gravity gravity gravity's what's holding the atmosphere down well with this they'll say you know this is this is not a gravity thing you can't use gravity for this they'll go uh layers they'll say layers and eventually now, a lot of people won't even know what to say at all but there's the anyone that does the only answer you can come up with is layers and it's like because uh, there is no technology that exists uh, mechanical technology to, to counteract a vacuum there it just isn't it does not exist and they'll say layers and you go, well, my winter coat has layers, but that just stops the cold from getting it. It's just an insulator. It does nothing against the, the vacuum. Uh, in fact, you can have 30 layers. They'll just compress into a single layer the, the, the second a vacuum force is applied and then it, the layers become worthless. The layers are worthless against the vacuum. So tell me how a suit doesn't look like a basketball. Simple question. In fact, maybe I'll, maybe I'll buy a basketball when I'm in Denver and bring it to the conference. I think that's a good idea. All right, so this one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. This is a message from the future. <laughs> really love your show. Thought you might be interested in this interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson from the British magazine New Scientist, where he states, all we're doing is driving around the block in low Earth orbit. Have attached the article and a pic for your slideshow. Uh, if you'd like to use it, the truth in plain sight again, hoping to get one of the FE, one of the FE conferences in the U S one day and meet up others who would like to question the world in which we live as there are so few like-minded people in Australia. Oh, I doubt that. I think there's a whole bunch. Please let me know if you read this email on your show. My mom would be super proud. Cheers, Ellie. 
Oh, that's nice. And I will, I did read it on the show, and I'm just looking at the article now, where they actually put him, you know, for the for the shot, the 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 article they actually put him in an astronaut helmet for the picture. And it says, of presidents and planets, many scientists are alarmed by the election of Donald Trump as U.S. President. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson reflects on what the future holds, President Obama's legacy, and the long road to Mars. <laughs> yeah, long road indeed, because you are never, ever going there. So yes, I will email Ellie and tell her it's going to be on the show. Okay, this one's called Prep Guide Spelling Mistake. Oh, boy. Look, I just wrote it myself and I threw it through a general spell. It might be a grammar. Well, you know what? It could be a spelling mistake. Because remember, spell checker will correct words, but sometimes it picks the wrong word. Hi, Mark. Just started reading your prep guide. Thank you again. I think I found an error on page 19. Fourth paragraph, third line, eighth word. Thought you might like to know. From John, upside down in New Zealand. And he doesn't even tell me the word. <laughs> Does not even tell me the word. Awesome. Great. So now I'm going to have to look at it. Well, I'm not changing the guide anyway. It's been out for years. So, but, but thank you again. The internet hive mind misses nothing. Fourth paragraph, third line, eighth word. Nice. Thanks, man. That's great. Again, this is why moviemistakes.com. This is why the, uh, the Flyers does so well. Because people go over everything with a fine tooth comb. They miss nothing. So NASA, take, take notes here. If you're going to make any sort of video at all, if you're going to release any sort of video material, that's what you're up against right there. They will stare at that screen. They will stare at it and over and over they'll rewind it and keep playing it. And if something bugs them, if something bugs them, they're going to catch it. Just saying. Uh, 12 slides. Could you please send me the 12 slides? Thanks, Rob. Yep. Sent him the 12 slides. We don't have that many 12 slides this this particular show. We will, though, in a couple of weeks because we had a, just a slew of them after I kept, I was telling people during the last Q&A thing. Okay, this one's called Finding the Curve Flat Earth Documentary Film. Not to be confused with Behind the Curve. This is Finding the Curve. Uh, oh, it's from e Enar, Enar Kusk. Hi, Mark. I'm a big fan. You're one of the people that first woke me up to Flat Earth with your Flat Earth Clues series. Thank you for that. I think you're familiar with my work, Finding the Curve. It's been a rough and uncertain road for me, but I'm back now for good. And I finally decided to make my journey into an epic Flat Earth documentary feature film for which I'm currently raising funds to start production. I wanted to ask you, would you be willing to mirror the trailer for the film's campaign in your channel and share it on your social media? Uh, I would help the cause so much and everybody's been waiting for a Flat Earth movie like this one. And the trailer is on YouTube. I, I don't know if I've mirrored it yet. And the, there's the Kickstarter campaign, Finding the ca Curve, and the video. Have I even... Yeah, Finding the Curve Kickstarter trailer. Yeah, I already gave it a thumbs up. And uh, it was released on August 6th. And it's about 11 minutes long. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hope, hope it does well. I really do. Okay, sorry, got to get back to this one. It's from, called Canada Conference. And we're loading, and we're loading, and the wheel is spinning. And you'd think with the blazingly fast internet connection that I have here, 200 megs down, that it would come up quicker, but sometimes it just sits there and hovers. So we will go back out of it and go back into it. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah, I refreshed. Like, it was only like three sentences. I love computers. Even after all this time, they still make me smile. Canada Conference. Mark, that was one of the best talks I've ever heard you give. Just wanted to let you know. Good job with Q&A, too. That's from Paul in the Plane. Uh, he was talking about my speech, my opening 17-minute, um, 18-minute speech that I gave at the Canada Conference with almost no sleep. And thank you for that. I was, you know, trying to rally the troops and, and tell, you know, kind of lay it out there for not just them, but for science as well and say, look, we're here and we are not going away. We're just getting bigger and weirder and it's a lot of fun. And if you want to put up a fight, go ahead. But at this point, it's going to be too late. This one's called Need Your Mailing Address. Hey, I wanted to send you a postcard. I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona right now, heading back to Chicago. That's from David Schmidt. And yes, I got that, David David Schmidt. I got your postcard, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look real quick here. It took a while to get here. And it's too dark in this room to look at it, but I'm pretty sure it is from David. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. 
I think it was taken. I don't know where that picture was taken. Anyway, but yeah, I got the postcard. So thank you for that. And anyone can send me anything they want. I uh, I don't care how weird it is, and as long as it's not poop or you know something like that. Send me no bad stuff, only good stuff and weird stuff. You can send it to my mailing address, which is literally in the description box of every video I make. Every, all my contact info is there. My phone number, my email address, my mailing address, my social security number, blood type. No, those last things weren't true. But the rest of it was true. This one's called FEIC Canada 2018. Hi, Mark. I'm writing this on Thursday night at the FEIC Canada convention. I don't know if you'll see this in the morning before if you present, but if you do, it would be cool to get a shout out or at least on your radio show later. I've created a Flat Earth Meetup group for Alberta on Facebook simply called the Flat Earth Meetup Alberta so that convention attendees might stay in touch. I'll be spreading the word as best as I'm able, but it would help me if you could to James. P.S. For future conventions, it would be great if I showed our home cities on our badges. And if there was some kind of Saturday night mixer after the presentations, those two little changes could really help get people talking to each other and build a local community. Yeah, you're, you're right. And and usually the, the and I will let him know that, that this is, I read this on this thing. Uh, but Usually the, the mixers and stuff are informal, you know, because there are people just, they go out and I mean, there's bars like the, the convention, a little different at the Edmondson conference because there was, uh, we were in this giant mall. And so there was tons and tons of restaurants and choices to go to, but in Raleigh, the, we had this big restaurant and this bar inside the, the lobby of the hotel. And so everybody just kind of went there. And, and yeah, we did a few things outside of then, but, but there was nothing really organized because the point of it is kind of make it organic. It's like, yeah, go, go, well, people can just kind of break off into their own groups. Kind of like after a high school dance type thing. People go off and do things. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. I like the badge, the cities on the badges, though. I do like that idea. I think that's cool. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Uh, Mark. Five questions, two, please. Uh, heard you read my email. Almost wrecked the truck. I was so excited. <laughs> no, not a groupie you need to worry about. Thanks, John. Yeah, don't wreck your truck. Uh, just because you heard me read your thing. John Schlugen. Is that German? Sounds German. C-H-U-L-G-E-N. Could be German. I don't know. Maybe. All right. He'll, he'll be surprised. Hopefully you're not driving. This one's called Content for Your Site. Uh, Mark, if I know you're in the heat, heat of movement and making change that is lasting. When you get time, take a look at the four parts. Also know there could be a sequel that you could be in. Sincerely, Jonathan. Got it. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. <clears throat> the, uh, the delivery drivers. Right, right. He sent me a follow up to that. Okay. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. That's from Grant. Let me send him the Survival Guide. Cool. Uh, in the Survival Guide, if you don't know what we're talking about there, that was a, a PDF file that I wrote called Empty Shelves because of the whole Katrina thing. It's just a 100-page document. It's free. Uh, you could use it as a survival guide. I, I highly recommend that you print it out. I mean, if you want to use the electronic version and you hope that the network you know, you can still use your pad, pad or tablet or phone when it goes down. That's fine. But I'd print out a copy. Okay. Let's see here. This one's called Ark of the Sun. Mark, I've been looking at this flat earth for a few months. Recently, I remembered something from my days in construction. I dug into my antique library and pulled out this book on the solar homes in which I found the answer I was looking for. So I did some simple observations. I live in the country, but there are a few trees around my home which face south and is true to the cardinal points of the compass. One, I noticed the sun came up at a point just north of my house. Two, the sun set just north of my house. Three, as the sun rose in the morning, it shi shined onto the back side of my house. Four, there was a long shadow on the south side of the house. You notice I'm using the word house a lot. Five, as the sun rose to the noontime position, a shadow soon appeared on the north side and grew in length until noon. Six, the shadow on the north side of the house grew shorter and disappeared just before noon. Seven, as the sun moved to the evening, the shadow on the north grew shorter and disappeared. Then the sun shined on the back of the house once more. 
8, <laughs> this is the last one, I swear, as the sun moved to the evening, the shadow on the south side began to grow again. Okay, conclusion. A, is it possible that the sun is moving up and down on the ball earth? Yeah, sure. B, or is it possible that the sun travels in a circle over the flat snow globe earth and what I am seeing is just a slice of the circle? Academia calls it an arc, don't they? You want more? Call me. That's from Rocky Russell. That's a great name, by the way. Hopefully it's his real name. And although I don't know if his parents actually named him Rocky, probably something else. And uh, yeah, the first part read like uh, the Dances with Wolves diary. <laughs> But I like the second part. You know, it's 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 very possible. Sure, sure. This one's called SW43 Throne of God Research Paper. Mark, can you please send me the Strange World 43 Throne of God Research Paper? I love your work and that of your guests. Thank you, Graham. Yep, I sent him the Throne of God paper. You guys can always ask for that as well. I didn't write it. It was done by one of the guests. This one's called Flat Water Experiment. Hi, Mark. I got your email from your channel on YouTube. I have an idea about an experiment to be done to prove water doesn't curve at all. Maybe I am not the first one to think about it. But anyway, I hope it can be implemented. Please reply to me to begin discussing with you. Thanks, Nabil. Okay, and he doesn't know, but if he's listening, look, I don't generally respond to cliffhangers. If you're going to write me something, don't say, I'd, and I'll tell you if you email me back. You know, I've got this big secret, and I'm not going to reveal it to you un, until after weather and sports. Uh, sorry, that's what the news does. Drives me insane. You know, five household chemicals that can kill you right now. And we'll tell you after weather and sports. It's like, what? Really? You're going to wait till the end of the show? And it's like, bleach, don't drink it. Th that's the end. It's like, really? It's, yeah, I'm sorry. So don't send me, um, don't send me cliffhangers. Just tell me your idea. Don't don't tease me with it. This one's called More Broken Snow Globes and it was sent to myself and Patricia Steer from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And, oh yeah, a Netflix film, Extinction, and it shows a broken snow globe, a snow globe laying on its side. Yeah, it's good. He took a screenshot on his, on his, on his television. It's awesome. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I, like yourself, started trying to figure out my own evidence to prove or disprove the flat earth concept. However, the more I look, the more questions arise. I like your approach. Let's not get emotional. Let's not believe because you're told something must be. I have researched many sites, many videos and documents, especially geo versus heliocentric and distance, especially GPS problems. I think the only way to decisively prove or disprove the flat earth discussion are the following. To fly a a circumnavigation of the Antarctic to measure it, proving size or a planet circumnavigation north, south, north. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a way to do it. The Antarctic Treaty won't let you do it, but that's it's a wonderful idea. And to send a civilian and FE advocate to the ISS <laughs> to take Polaroid pictures of the moon, sun, earth, and visible stars so that height and position could be established and orbiting satellites. Also a great idea. Never, ever, ever, ever going to happen, though. Uh, to create, uh, and the last one, to create a point uh, at high level lens on the moon landing sites and prove once and for all whether we did or did not go there regards John. And, you know, all those things are good, but I came up with one that was even more simple, which will probably have me dying in a vacuum chamber, which is that the astronaut suit doesn't work. Kind of like what I mentioned earlier, how it, does an astronaut suit not look like a basketball? And that there is no technology that can stop a soft container, a flexible pliable, I don't care what fabric you're using. If you're not using a hard shell, it's soft. And how does that, uh, how does that work against a vacuum? How, how does that happen? At, so, and, and you say, well, that doesn't prove a flat earth. No, no, it doesn't. But it absolutely destroys the entire space program because it is, is the lost nail. If the spacesuit doesn't work, if the spacesuit cannot work, then anything that ever showed from any organization, any organization showed a spacesuit then that footage is is fraudulent. It's it's a lie. And if all that's a lie, then all space programs are a lie. And if they're all lies, what what is it? Now, of course, does not prove flat Earth. No, it doesn't. But it puts into question why everyone would bother faking the, all, all the space stuff. You got to remember, it comes back to the reason. Why fake it? 
why fake it? There is no good enough. There was not no good enough reason. A reason not good enough. Whatever. Terrible English. Uh, until I, I, you know, I didn't believe the moon mission for a long time, but I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. It's like, yeah, for the money, maybe that's why you're doing it. But then when I got to flat Earth, it's like, oh, okay, you had to. You you had to keep you had to make sure the the public didn't venture out there on on the by the on their own. You had to make sure the subcontractors didn't start getting their own wild ideas. You had to release a picture of the Earth from space, so that you could finally say, "Well, we have the tech. Here's how we did it." And there's the picture, and and good night, everybody. And we never ever go back again. You milk that picture for decade after decade after decade, and yeah. So sorry. That's the answer, long answer to your question. Uh, this one's called our, Your Safety on Whidbey Island. Huh. Dear Mark, praying for your safety on Whidbey. Seems to be a war going on in the sky there. Oh, right, right, right. The Anons and Q seem to suggest missile launched from the island at an Air Force base on its way to Singapore. Stolen plane and potential F-15 shot, shots fired at? Plane or black hat launching pad? And now porno in the sky for all to see? How did I miss that? Any sauce with eyes on the ground there. Stay safe. Keep it flat. Yeah, there was some sort of rocket. Nobody's talking about it. Fired from some something on in our neck of the woods. I don't know if it was a rocket. You know, who knows? It could have been a misfire from a, um, a, a Navy boat. But I mean, it was one of our rockets. No question. Where it was going, no idea. And the guy that hijacked the plane, the mechanic that apparently had a death wish that took off from SeaTac, uh, that I I don't think there was anything really fun about that. I mean, he it was just him. Uh, grabbed a plane it wasn't even a jet it was a, a big prop plane uh, you know it could have had a bunch of people in it takes off and flies around for a while and then they had fighters escorting him around and then he crashes it into an island and supposedly dies so uh, there really wasn't much more to that story i mean as you know mechanics have access to a lot of things and they would have access to the aircraft and apparently he knew how to fly as well that story didn't do much for me. Sorry. I Plus, I was in Canada when it happened. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Question. Dear Mark, I continue to believe in the flat earth by answering questions about the globe. One I have not heard discussed is comets. I was recently watching a meteor shower and remember the comet Hail Bob. Hail Bob or Hail Bob? And that it took several thousands of years and billions of miles to make the circuit, allegedly. There seems to be a degree of truth regarding a comet in distance. Uh, my question is, if all stars within the firmament, including comets, how can it be explained that they disappear from view and return many years later? Oh, as though in orbit. And that's from Don at Oklahoma. Don, come on, man. I know you can think your way through this. If I go to a planetarium, can I see a comet there? Yes, I can. Can I make that comet disappear? Yes, I can. Can I make up any story I want regarding that comet? You bet. It's like, oh yeah, the comet's gone and it'll return in 30 years. Uh, kind of like a, an oversimplification would be what? A cuckoo clock, right? Where does the cuckoo go? You know, it only shows up once an hour. And then in, where's it go after it goes away? It disappears. I mean, it's This is not hard technology to do. We can do this right now. You know, why does a blood moon not become a blood moon sometimes you're just talking about timing that's all it is remember if if the what you're seeing up in the sky is signs and wonders it's also a clock system you know for seasons and i think that's the old reference for seasons but it's really just a giant clock system it's a very very pretty clock system but it's still a clock and what haley's comet every 75 years 76 years that's a really slow part of the clock moving on this one's called movie quote hi mark i have a quote of a movie that I want you to guess. Okay, it goes something like this. If he succeeds in proving the existence of these, of these worlds, I don't know if he even wrote this right, uh, I will, it'll, it will contradict centuries of teaching. There will always be free thinkers and heretics unless we deal with the root of the problem. There is some people that might think very similar to this. Don't you think so? Keep it flat. And that's, oh, he's not, he's from Brazil. Sorry, I shouldn't have made fun of his English. Uh, it's Roberto Sant Santos from Brazil, but living in Albany, New York, waiting for the Flat Earth meeting here. And no, I do not know that, that quote. I'll have to look that one up. If he succeeds in proving the existence of these, of these worlds, it will contradict centuries. It's got to be a UFO reference alien existence type reference i'll have to look it up somebody knows before i, I don't think i'm going to think of it during this show 
somebody knows, please let me know. But I'll, I'll try to look it up. This is called A Quick Thanks, Survival Guide, and 12 Compelling Pictures. Mark, you have done some incredible work, and I'm so happy to be awakened by this great deception. I really appreciate all you have done and are continuing to do. I hope you stay encouraged daily and give those ballers something to think about. Also, I would appreciate a copy of your survival guide and slideshow of the gentleman. Well, it would be Gentleman Jack. That says, oh, wait, isn't that a drink? I think it is a drink. That says he never fails to convert others with. I need that sort of luck. I have a very scientism believing family, so I will need all the help I can. Once I decide to bring this to their attention, I've been watching your show and trying to pick up any of the episodes with subject matter experts. What a great, great way to build up solid credibility for those that might be skeptical. I'm curious as to what your religious views are and how they correlate to the review of the flat earth. I subscribe to the biblical model and have the utmost respect for Rob Skiba's work in the area. I just haven't come across a video that clearly defines your personal beliefs. Also, I would be interested in seeing more dialogue between you and Rob Skiba. <laughs> I can only find one or two radio shows that are much older. Let me know if there's any way to donate. You do good work and should be rewarded. If you teach them, they will come. Casey Allison. And, uh, okay, so the my views uh, i've been i've been pretty clear over the the last couple of years which is i was raised in a strong born again christian family an evangelical and you know went to vacation bible school and youth group and camp malibu and and all those fun things and then fell away when i got to university and then stayed away when, when i got into tech i was a big nerd big nerd geek dork and you know, followed all the tech stuff, and, and church really wasn't a part of my life, and spirituality really wasn't that much of a part of my life. And then the flat Earth brought me back in because if you believe in a flat enclosed structure, the biblical model, which I do, enclosed with a firmament, then it was built. It was it was built. Like I'll say that over and over again. It was created, built, architect type thing, which means that it wasn't really organic. Uh, it, it was it was manufactured and if that was the case well there's your god there's your intelligent design for you and it and, and i appreciate i appreciate that there are a few flat earthers out there who are atheists but come on <laughs> come on some if somebody built it you're living in a built structure then fine you don't want to say it's god if you don't want to acknowledge that whoever it is is i mean you at the very least they're more advanced than you are and they're in you're really kind of splitting hairs and fine, and I get it. You don't want, you're not going to worship them. I get that. But that's all we're really talking about here. It's like, okay, they built it, but I'm not going to worship them. Okay, that's just a personal choice. Not going to judge. Anyway, thank you for that. This one's called Whidbey Island Street Name Question. I'm curious. Mark, I know you are from Whidbey Island, and I had some questions about the street names there. I followed you on YouTube for a while and re recently discovered I was unfollowed. Okay. Can you shed any light on this tweet? I, I don't have Twitter, but, but go ahead. I am wondering if that is true, and if so, what were the names of the streets before? Thank you, Mark, for helping me. I have not looked at this, so I've got to view this real quick here. It's a small file. And somebody tweeted, Whidbey Island seems important. Look at the names of towns, streets, and parks. Clinton, Sandy, oh, you know what? Oh my Lord. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me. Yeah, there is a Sandy Hook right down the, right down the road from here. Cultus Road, Possession Point, Baby Island Heights. Uh, Autists need to, to dig into this location. Wow. I, you're, you're, holy smokes. Yeah, Sandy Hook was uh, was on the, I mean, it's not very far from here, but it's on the other side. I, I didn't go down to Sandy Hook much. But yeah, Clinton is the ferry that I would go to all the time. Wow. Now, if you're going to look into that that much, um, and you know what, I will respond to him and, and I will say that, holy smokes, I did not know. But I grew up on Sunlight Beach Road, which is part of Useless Bay and useless bay you know, not much you can read there i mean sunlight beach it was because we we're hoping for sun on that beach we are in washington after all and being part of useless bay why is it called useless bay because the tide goes out really really far during low tide and boats are 
it's useless as a harbor. You cannot use it as a, as a harbor point, even though it's 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 carved in really nice. You can it, it has potential as a harbor, but the low tide makes it really really treacherous. So like the uh, the golf course, I love it. The uh, the logo, the, their coat of arms is a boat listing on its side on the ground. <laughs> because it's 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 already it's grounded and so it's just kind of tipping over like big boats would you know because they're they've got that point at the bottom anyway uh this one's called hey iss where are the interviews mark ever noticed there's has has no been as much iss interviews since the glitch and i think he meant to say not been as much and that's from the cisco yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 interviews and the ISS because we're, we're looking, we're looking ever closer. We're we're just tearing apart everything with a microscope now. So the more stuff you release, oh shit, they should just crash that thing. They should just have some giant catastrophe and just wreck it, and and get rid of it. It would it's it would be the best thing for them at this point because everything they release is just horrible production value. I mean, the technical glitches are awful. Uh, the mechanical glitches are awful. The, the production value is terrible. I mean, hairspray, come on. And now they can't change it. Like, for example, anyone that knows anything about filters knows that you would never have astronauts with hair. You would have their heads shaved immediately and, and use like a floby and, and have their, their arm hair and everything. You would have them wearing long sleeves all the time. And they have full heads of hair. Women have long hair. You know, why They should be buzzed all the time. You should be wearing surgical caps at all times. And you don't, you don't see that. And it's, it's, it's silly. The filters would get jammed up. You treat it no different than a swimming pool. And the day don't do that. And short sleeve shirts, polo shirts and khakis and, and socks. Yep. Makes total sense. Nobody's in a spacesuit. Nobody's ever climbing in and out of space. So there's no doors. Oh, sorry. I get, I get headaches just thinking about it. Okay. This one's called mysterious sunrise. Mark, check out this video. And I'm not, I'm not moaning because of the video they chose. It was because I was thinking about the ISS. It's called Mysterious Sunrise Research Flat Earth. Yep, I already gave it a thumbs up. And when you zoom in on it, oh yeah, because it's bl it's blurring into the into the ground down below. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yep, thank you for that. This one's called GTA Vice City Joe Jackson. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to share something I found amusing. I was playing GTA Vice. That's Grand Theft Auto, by the way, if you're not a gamer, at which I will not play. It's one of the few games I refuse to play because it's based on crime. And you're thinking, what a freaking Boy Scout, right? No, 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 no. Uh, look, you know, games, they affect people. And you, you're you having nine-year-olds play Grand Theft Auto, and they've had versions of this now uh, for years where the whole goal is to commit crimes. I wasn't a big fan, and I was in my whew, I was in my late 20s when Carmageddon came out. Look up that old game, where you get points for running over people on the sidewalk. That's about as advanced as it was going to get, and the 3D graphics were, were not very good. But, I mean, you were leaving, you were, I mean, you were, there was a lot of blood in that and the lawn and you got even more points for running into cop cars and disabling cop cars and the law enforcement groups put up a bit of a stink against it and they should have and grand theft auto is no different and no offense to the game makers but uh, come on i mean this is this is when one of those examples where i think america tends to go too far we always do we go too far and then we try to reel it back in but they're not reeling back in gta it's winning awards and and it's a beautiful it's a gorgeous game it is state of the art in terms of game technology but you're teaching people i mean the whole the the the, the title of it it's called grand theft auto the whole point is to commit crimes in a city and see what you can get away with and you're you're giving kids horrible lessons i'm i'm really surprised that the law enforcement hasn't has hasn't tried a more concentrated effort to to kind of and you say oh you know fr freedom of expression and free speech and it's just entertainment eh, is it if you're engaged that much you're playing this thing hours and hours as a kid hey, if you're in your a certain age maybe uh, i know there's no there's no really great answer to this because you can't set like a minimum age requirement because you're just gonna have people uh, you know, buying it for other people. But uh, anyway, the point is I won't play it. Never have, never will, because it's it's just to, um, uh, it's not even the violence. It's the morality behind it. So call me, call me a Boy Scout if you want, but just how I am. 
Okay, anyway, uh, let's see, I was playing GTA Vice City the other day, and I was doing what most people do when they play, just running around killing people. Yep, same. I haven't even read this yet. I had just killed a bunch of people with an assault rifle, aimlessly, and got three stars, so the heat was on. <laughs> I mean, the law enforcement. In an attempt to elude the fuzz, I pulled this poor elderly lady from her station wagon, then proceeded to run her over for good measure, really trying for that extra star, as I punched it burning out in the old woman's blood, I guess. The song came on in the game radio. Guess what? It was That's right. It was Stepping Out by Joe Jackson. I was instantly reminded of your show and how you were in the video game scene. <laughs> Seems no matter what I do, I'm always reminded of Flat Earth. Anyway, that's it. Stay flat. Okay, and that's from uh, Chris Lee Lewis. And I don't know if that's a, a man or a woman's name, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so you, that, that paragraph right there, that pretty much says it all. Yep. He killed a whole bunch of people, and then he killed an elderly woman, and trying to run away from the cops. And you wonder why we have problems out there. So, yeah. <laughs> Joe Jackson stuff. Love the Joe Jackson. With, so I wonder if Joe even knows that he's out, he's on this video game. Uh, he'd probably just take the money anyway. Okay, this one's called, Please Help This Guy Expose the Powers That Should Not Be by Shedding Light on This. Hello, Mark. I know you're very busy. I didn't know any other way of getting in contact with you, but there is a small Flat Earth channel, Zoom Truth, targeted for preaching Flat Earth by the police. He could use your help. The direct link to his channel and the two videos are as follows. I know you don't like being told what you should post, and I would never do that. Eh, sounds like you're gonna. But I know if you look into this, you'll be inspired to expose these powers that should not be suppressing us. Thank you for any time and any help you can offer. If they can't shut up the truth, so they are attacking our First Amendment literally on the streets. Uh, this next video is my attempt to reach out. Uh, this is Respus Finham channel reporting from the front lines. Please tell Patricia about this guy. Yep, we know about him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thumbs it up and, and I think I'm subscribed. I think street activism. Yeah, it's 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 not easy and, and it's not exactly my thing. But I encourage anyone that if you have a talent for it, if you if you can get out there and if you get super excited and you want to tell people about Flat Earth, because most of the time it goes pretty well. I honestly, though, and I'll, I'll encourage people to do this at the conference uh, and that because you'll see a lot more of these wear lab coats. And it sounds silly. But you'd be amazed how disarming lab coats are. If you have two people in lab coats or just a, one guy in a, in a lab coat and another guy with a camera, and the guy in the lab coat's holding a clipboard, you're going to hold a clipboard with a blank piece of paper on it. People are going to listen to you, especially if you have a camera on you. They think you know what you're talking about because we are conditioned. It's one of my clues, which I, I did recently, which is called the code of credibility. I will be wearing a, a lab coat, a full-blown Mandarin cut lab coat, and, you know, evil genius style at the conference which is coming up in november in denver i'll be wearing this to my set and because it is the code of credibility subliminally people think you are more intelligent than you are they think you know what you're talking about because we drill it into people's heads not just the not just the people in real life but your doctors and your lab technicians the people on television the people on in movies and tv and commercials i don't i'm not a doctor but i play one on tv it's like we we immediately recognize it and if you don't know what i'm talking about again look up the uh, code of credibility this one's called mark damn it i don't cuss wow mark i'm interested to work with you full time for free oh okay i can thoroughly totally and completely how redundant uh, explain why and how people cannot believe in a dramatically different shape of the earth this helps people understand. Therefore, one, do a better job taking baby steps, roundabout steps with people. Two, makes life easier for people. Three, gives them a way to speak about it. Four, better understand themselves. Five, avoid getting upset, frustrations, getting mad. Six, will help avoid family and friendships, breaking up so suddenly. Seven, opens a significant door for people to better understand themselves. Eight, reveals, supports, leads to a truer understanding of God, love, truth, and the purpose of life relative to the condition of all humanity and the world and of the world globe even and that's from martin schumacher call anytime my life is this i can co i can so appreciate an outlet and a comrade uh p.s one idea pass it on to rick hummer at least and let him call initially in your stead it's not the best okay so cool awesome 
This one's called About the WEBN Flat Earth T-shirt. Mark just thought it was ironic how they treated you on a radio show, then use Flat Earth on television. Maybe it's sunk in. Stay flat. And that's from William. This one's called Survival Guide. I haven't had one of those in a while. Hey, Mark, can I get a copy of your Survival Guide, please? Awesome presentation at Edmonton 2018. Keep up the good work. Carl from Montreal. Thank you very much. Again, if you guys want to listen to that, I now have it. Well, I mean, uh, DITRH mirrored it and a couple other people mirrored it. But I use it as the default video if you already subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel being Mark K. Sargent, the intro. So if you're not subscribed, it's a uh, kind of a compilation, compilation, compl compilation. Wow. I think I know that word. The, uh, of a bunch of, of different video images set to music, but if you're subscribed, it goes to that speech now because I, I've gotten good response off that speech. And, and, uh, again, I was amazed I could actually, uh, good thing I didn't drink the night before because I was pretty tired. This one's called Delivery Driver's Flat Earth Movie. Mark, I saw your five questions to the Georgetown professor and you nailed it. The super zoom proves the perspective, uh, not a curved body of water. The flat water observation, top notch work by you and delivered amazing. If you do get time, watch the link to the YouTube Delivery Driver's Flat Earth. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like this movie can be a way many can relieve relieve relive relive their uh, awareness in a vacuum of round ball deception the heliocentric religion lie is thick and becoming aware is like stepping on new land or fighting out a truth that is game changing sincerely jonathan you're welcome uh so it's called great speech mark couldn't have said it better brother keep up the good work and that's from alex thank you alex this one's called Coast to Coast Interviews. Hi, Mark. Can you send me your Coast to Coast Interviews, please? I think you said you had two interviews. Thanks in advance. I've attached a picture I took I took of the moon rotating like a clock on the same day from Adelaide, South Australia. Kind regards, Pete. And yeah, I sent him the Coast to Coast Interviews, and there were two of them. One was with George Norrie, and the other was with Connie. And the George Norrie one was done in 2015, and the Connie one, I believe, was done in 2017. The George, the George Norrie one in 2015 really surprised me, though. Uh, this one's called, it's a follow-up, Survival Guide. We'll do a couple more. Mark, thanks you for your guide. Do you allow me to post it as a file on my... Did I respond to this guy? Please tell me I respond. Yes, I did. Can I post this on my FEQC Facebook group page? Yes, you can. Anyone can take any of my material from, from anything and just post it wherever they want. You don't need my permission. And most of it's Creative Commons license anyway. Just go for it. Have fun. Uh, the truth should be free or at least closest free as it can be. Uh, I am one of the two admins of this page created by two awake French Canadians. We are spreading the truth here with uh, only FE facts, NASA exposure, and try to stay away from religions as much as possible simply because it divides people instead of united people. So many religions. Eh, we're working on that. I have watched your Flat Earth Clues. I have chatted multiple times with D. Murphy, D. Marble, Robbie, and if you check the group, you can see I'm very active on my group page. If you don't allow me, that's fine too, by the way. No hard feelings. I might simply create a post instead to say to have access to this guide simply by explaining what I did to receive the document. Thank you again, Mark, for your awesome work and devotion to the cause and community. Take care. It's flat. Carl Davidson. Yep. Again, anyone can use anything they want. You want to take the clues and grab them, edit them, rip them up, do it which you want. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Guacamole. You know what? <laughs> Should we end on this one? Yeah, you know what? We're going to end on this one. It's called Flat Earth Guacamole. Uh, and I do like guacamole. Uh, but here it is. Hey, Mark, I thought I'd send you my rec recipe for Flat Earth Guac. I really like it. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Okay, Flat Earth Guac. It includes... Ready for this? And no, I'm not going to send you guys the recipe. You're going to have to write this down. So don't start asking me for, for flat, flat earth guac. Uh, three avocados, peeled, pitted, and mashed. One lime, juiced. One teaspoon of salt. One half cup diced onion. Three tablespoons fresh chopped cilantro. One teaspoon minced garlic. One pinch cayenne pepper. That's optional. And one can of Rotel diced tomatoes with habaneros. That's it. 
Uh, just whip them all together, and there you go, and and serve. Uh, that's from Scott Inwards in Frankfurt, Germany. I love the fact that <laughs> this 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 is the international flavor for you. A little play on words there, which is a guy from Germany is sending me his best recipe for guacamole. Uh, and uh, and he's in flat earth that's awesome so okay we're gonna end on that one because that's kind of fun did not i don't get a lot of recipes as you guys know so i uh, let's see thank you for everybody i'll write back all the other people i said i was gonna write back and uh, thank you for everyone who wrote me so far remember you can send your questions to m s a r g e n t 23 that's comcast.net and for everybody on this sunday Stay flat.